It's Friday night. Welcome to the Coach Stevenson Scoreboard Show. We're glad you joined us tonight, and it is a Yellow Jacket Friday night, Barry. Yellow Jackets come out on top over the Hiram Hornets. Sure did. Uh, 63 points put on the board tonight by the Jackets, and uh, just a, an emphatic statement uh, by the Yellow Jackets tonight, scoring a variety of ways, too. Um, you know, through the air, through the ground, punt, kickoff. Um, the only thing missing was a defensive touchdown. So, you know, it's a good job by Calhoun tonight. Yeah, and I thought the defense played very well. Um, they set the tone uh, there. Um, you know, you'll see the breakdown with uh, Coach Stevenson and Dave Stokes here in just a little bit um, covering the first half. But uh, Calhoun was able to get that defensive stop first, and I thought kind of set the tone there flipping it over and, and Calhoun getting on the board there with their their first score, you know, just uh, a solid start. Yes, it, it was. And, uh, you know, I thought Calhoun did a really good job in the run game tonight. I uh, was able to uh, get a lot of good blocking from Halls Hogs. And, uh, you know, a lot of the linemen, you know, played very well. I thought that especially the interior linemen, uh, Jace Warren, Christian Bell, uh, Ty Massey before he went out of the game. I, I thought they all three had – you know, very good games, you know, pulling and, uh, you know, being able to extend plays. You know, I thought it was interesting you mentioned the run game, and I believe it was a third and seven um, there in the beginning, and, and uh, we run the ball. And uh, that kind of showed you we felt confident that um, in our offensive line and our backs, and uh, both backs ran the ball well. Yes, it did. Um, you know, Gage Leonard uh, was very patient with the ball tonight. Um, I, I thought, you know, he allowed the blockers to, you know, get downfield and, you know, set something up for him and, and did a good job recognizing that and, and following those guys through. And, you know, Caden Williams early in the ball game had a very explosive run uh, where it looked like he was just going to get a first down run. And next thing you know, he almost scores. He mm -hmm. uh, was able to break a tackle and bounce it outside for a big gain. So, you know, I thought they both uh, – Aside from fumbles, you know, had a, a really good game. And, uh, I bet they, they get some hand drills probably in practice this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably so a little bit. Uh, speaking of hands, uh, let's talk about Cole Spear a little bit. Yeah, Cole Spear, uh, very electric uh, tonight in the return game, both uh, kickoff and punt return. Did a very nice job. And, uh, you know, again, like, you know, Caden and, and Gage, I, I thought, you know, had a very good game, had a lot of explosive plays. Uh, anytime on offense you can have explosive plays, um, you know, it's going to make the coaching staff happy. It makes their job a lot easier. Absolutely. Uh, well, we got scores for you tonight. That's what you guys are tuning in for also to watch Dave and Clay break down the game uh, for you. But, uh, Barry, let, what's our scores? How the, how the, who are the winners and losers of tonight? All right, it is your carpool Scores of the week, sponsored by Sedevas Bank, the bank of here. It was Calhoun winners tonight over Hiram on homecoming, 63-17. to 17. And I believe Dave will have a, a breakdown of all the homecoming festivities as well, give you the winners in, in the homecoming court. Uh, next week's opponent, Blessed Trinity, 40-3. to 3. Yesterday they played uh, against Woodland and uh, made a statement, so now the Jackets will be traveling there next week. Mount Zion knocks off our merch eve 28-14. It was bowed over Gordon Lee 38-15. Cartersville 43-7 over Cass tonight. Cedartown gets back on track. 31-0 winners over Pickens. Chattooga 47-21 over Gordon Central tonight. Cahola Creek gets another win. I believe this win sets a program record yeah. for most in a season. They uh, knock off Murray County 28-22. Darlington, 40-33 over Bremen tonight. It was Fannin County over Pepperell, 40-14. Harrelson County knocks off Elbert County, 26-21. That's a big win for Harrelson County. Heritage, 58-27 winners over Ridgeland. It was Model defeating Coosa tonight, 37-7. And I think, yeah, I don't have the winner circle. That's, that's Ringgold. Ringgold, right? Yep, yep. that's Ringgold. Ringgold winners tonight, 24-13. Over Adairsville, it was Rockmart, 34-13, winners over North Murray. Rome all over Dalton tonight, 49-6. Sonorville wins their homecoming game, 47-12 over LFO. It was Tryon over Southeast Whitfield, 49-0. Creek 
Christian Heritage shuts out Lakeway Christian 41 to nothing. Get a load of this one. Warner Robins 77 to 34 <laughs> over Camden County. I think they might be all right. Uh, just, just a little. Might be. Uh, this one's a little bit of a uh, statement game. Trinity Christian 34 to 3 over Elka today. Yeah, man. Um, you know, that's a pretty impressive win. Carrollton gets back on track. 40 to 13 winners over South Paulding. Uh, you know, that South Paulding team knocked off Rome a few weeks back. So, yeah, uh, you know, you hated to be you hated to be South Paulding really after Carrollton going down, you know, to Rome last week. Yeah. And uh, you just uh, <laughs> didn't line up well for South Paulding. How about our old friend, Coach Davis, getting the win tonight against Pierce County, Raven County winners, 28 to 21. And which was an Oscar Mayer wiener. Thomasville. 41 to 7 winners over Yes, County. sir. And Jason Hawkins promised me early in the week he was going to go down and get his boys ready to play. The Little Red Devils. Hawkinsville. Losers. 56 14. Come on, Hawkins. Man. I, mean, I, I think we need to get him here one night and hear his pep talk because it's clearly not very good. Yeah, I agree. He's going to have to put on his uh, Hulk Hogan outfit, come yes. in and uh, do an impersonation to Rick try Flair. to get him fired up. Or Low the flare, yeah. Robe, you know, I, Something like that will work. I don't know. I, it's not getting the job done, that's for sure. Is uh, we've, we've went a long way from that state championship run a few years back to where they are now. That's but, right. Uh, you know, hey, looking forward to hearing the voice and coach break down the first half here in just a few um, but let's hear uh, kind of what your thoughts are. As I know, Coach is uh, getting a few things ready. What's your thoughts on the first half uh, defensively for the Jackets? Yeah, like I said earlier, the stop right away, you know, the first stop, um, Calhoun lost the toss, um, and Hiram selected to take the ball um, on offense, and uh, Calhoun came, came out on defense, got a stop. Um, you know, I thought uh, Calhoun covered well, uh, definitely in the first half on the passing game. Um, they really couldn't get anything going. I thought they read plays very well um, in anticipation. Obviously, uh, the game plan um, going in was um, very solid, I thought, uh, well prepared. And uh, defensively, they played like it in the first half. Yeah, I, I thought that um – Christopher Lewis played very well tonight. I thought he was uh, really, you know, hitting some guys out there, making uh, making a lot of good plays. And, uh, you know, really, I, I thought Caden Williams, he came into the game uh, on third downs. Mm -hmm. You know, he and uh, Amari Winston and Christian Gregory uh, were able to really, you know, create some pass rush. Um, and Caden doing a good job kind of staying at home as they were – getting after it, and uh, third downs, really, Calhoun's defense really dominated it. Yeah, they did. Jai Hogan as well, right there in the middle, was able to uh, fill that gap uh, uh, tonight. I thought he uh, he did a good job um, making way for our yeah, linebackers. Think, for like Mason Green play, had an outstanding game. Um, I think Amari Winston had two sacks in the game. He did. Uh, had one early from the backside, if I remember correctly, and um, you'll see that here in just a minute. But um, yeah, defensively, solid performance from the Jackets, especially in the first half. Yes, absolutely. And uh, I think it's now time that uh, maybe we get some commercials going here, and we'll turn it over now to Coach and the voice of the Jackets, Dave Stokes. <laughs> Okay. 
say hey yellow jacket football fans welcome to the coach stevenson scoreboard show and coach congratulations on a 63 to 17 victory dominating victory uh, i think you accomplished a lot tonight yeah we did we played well um for the most part yes know, right. we, we played sloppy um but you know you can't be you can't be upset at 63 points right but then, you know we come in at halftime and it was um <laughs> It was, you know, not a uh, not a great atmosphere at halftime because we had <laughs> come close to sealing the deal in the first half and couldn't, and just made mistake after mistake there at the end. That um, just things that we haven't even done in practice, we were making mistakes like that. So that was uh, very unfortunate for you know to to end the half that way. But um, the challenge to come out at halftime and, and respond, and I feel like they did. When Clint caught up with you going into halftime, uh, I've, we figured Barry and I said there might be a little coaching up being done at halftime. Yeah, it's it really there's nothing. There's no adjustments. You know, sometimes no, we come no. in and we, we watched it, and there was nothing. It was all about ourselves. Yeah. You know, it was uh, and that's stuff that you can't really fix at halftime. But we we made sure that we were going to fix that next week in practice, and hopefully we'll be able to do that. You are five and one overall, one and zero oh in the region, which is important. You scored sixty three points. You scored over fifty points in a, in three of the last four games. You have now scored two hundred sixty eight offensively, averaging forty four point seven a game, giving up only one hundred twenty points in the season. That's twenty per game. That that black shirt defense scoring output or what the other teams are scoring is dropping week after week. Yeah, I feel like we're improving each week. And, you know, overall, when you look at the, the, the grand scheme of things, I think we did get better today. But there were some things that, that we still need to polish up to, to be able to be a championship-level football team. That's why right. I told them at, at, at halftime after we had, um, you know, preached to them a little bit. I told them it was uh, – it, to be a championship football team, we can't make those mistakes. Right. And so that's what we kind of harped on and came out in the second half and played played better. 35 rushes for 280 yards, 8 yards per carry. Uh, passing 16 for 21. This includes Christian Lewis and Trey Townsend. That's a 19 and 4 tenths yards per completion or 14.8 yards per attempt. That's 76 percentage between your two quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. uh, total of 310 yards. 590 yards of offense by the pound and shoot offense. Yeah, they had it rolling. You know, it was, yes. um, like I said, that we, we stopped ourselves a few times that we could have got it out of reach of the, in the first half, but um, but overall it was a, it was a you know a, a great, great performance. Before we look at the first half highlights, just one more comment: the youngins did a good job with their offense, their first possession, and with their defense, the first possession by Hiram. So you had to be pleased with the youngins in the yeah, fourth quarter. The yeah, they did. Um, running clock, you don't get many possessions, but uh, we're able to get some good kids, some kids in there, and got some good playing time. And uh, anytime we get chance to get those guys in there it's, it's great it's homecoming night at the reeve and our captains for tonight we'll uh, we'll talk about the uh, queen and her court here at the end of the first half but our captains for tonight are yeah we had jai hogan uh, mason green jace warren and christian lewis i like these white helmets on these black uniforms yeah, it does look good from it the does. uh from the stands especially yeah, it does it really does we got the helmet fully inflated we got the smoke from behind the it was it was a great sign yeah. they, they worked hard on that all week um and do it up in the in the weight room so i get to see it kind of piece together as it goes it's uh you know every everybody that comes here talks about how, how great an atmosphere it is and and all that and um because this was Hiram's first time being here so it was a uh it was a good night there well yeah the, the few fans they brought i'm sure enjoyed themselves they won the toss yeah we, they took the ball is they, that right? yep yep a little sky kick there. Um, kickers are doing an awesome job of putting it where they want to, and tonight was no uh, – yeah, Christopher Lewis had a big hit there. The first slobber knocker of the game. Yeah, the kickers are doing a great job. Yeah, and our coverage was better tonight. So, yes. So uh, we worked really hard on that. Coach Perkins did during the week. They bobbled the snap, pick it up, and that is going to be a recurring theme throughout this yeah, game. Yeah, we, we never could quite get a hold of it. They were bouncing. <laughs> they were all bouncing their way. Yes, it did bounce their way. So it brings up second down. They have some good-looking athletes, Coach. Well, they do, and they, they do a you know a pretty good job of, of getting those guys the ball here a few times. That you know they, they make some matchup matchup problems. Well, the big number eighty-two at the top on the inside where the three receivers are, folks. I'd be tempted to throw the ball to him on every day. Yeah, just throw it up. It was a good sack there by Mar Winston, a little third-down package that um, defense staff put in, and he. Gets around there and makes a set. You did a fair amount of substituting with young down linemen with the regular starters. Yeah, we subbed a bunch. You know, we had a had a dime package that we that we had in just because they're a like I said a different 
offense from the wing tee. So. This play comes back. It was already down. Gage Leonard walk, ran in there with the Australian rules football kicking, punting. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't blow it dead, but they didn't. So There's a couple things that we're going to question about the referees, but I'll leave that to me. So first and ten, we've got it on in their territory plus territory. So we hand off and we got a nice run to start with. And yeah, awesome. yeah, we got what we wanted to out there and we got four or five. Second down and six. We fumbled the snap. Yeah, we got a hit by Lyman there. We just got to be better. Um, execute that a little better. So we're going to have second and about six and a half to go. Hand off to Caden Williams. He gets a nice hole on the right hand side. Does a nice job of running. Down the sideline he goes. And they're going to knock him out of bounds at about the five, if I'm not mistaken. And that was a good block there by Gage leading up in the hole. And the offensive line had a, a big hole for him as well. First and goal at the five. Another high snap. Christian did a good job of snagging that ball. Yeah, he did. We got to have a little better execution down there on several times of um, red zone stuff that we uh, we work on a lot, which didn't execute it real well tonight. Threw it up high. For yeah, him. you give him a chance. He's on a corner route, and it was you know he might catch fifty of those, which is or fifty percent of those. Yeah, he was just going to give him a fifty-fifty ball, and he was going up for the high rebound. Yeah. We have both our running backs in the game. Gage is a blocking back, and Caden's to the left of Christian. So yeah, had, yeah, we kind of had to had a, another play called, and or not, it was a read. The pass snap made him just get the ball off in a hurry. Caden did a good job of adjusting to it. They call face mask against them. I was man, I almost looked like he got in. Yeah, that's. The, and then we get into a legal procedure yeah. against you can't, us. You can't, you can't be off sides from the one. No. So it backs us up to the five. And the ball was just shy of the goal line. This ball sitting on the five, the nose is just behind Yeah, I had some call and didn't like it. Because we again, we're trying to find out the whole time. Is it going to be third down or first down? And all of a sudden, it's third, and they blow it in. And I didn't, uh, I didn't have the right play ready. So we hand off and bust it into the – End zone is Gage Leonard. He has a good, a good job by Caden in the offensive line making a hole for him. First of three touchdowns for Gage tonight. And that one came with about 7.29 left. And our extra point kicking is just phenomenal. Yeah, the whole process was, was good. Brendan snapping really well, and Christian stayed there holding. And Sergio knocks it through the uprights and it's tough for Christian to go from right to left right to left yeah it is he has to look see who's coming in the referees do too you know they have to be on the correct side yes so they don't like it when we switch and a little squib yeah, kick yeah squib kick there instead of the sky they've been working coach Hernandez working really hard on that just said something different <clears throat> he told me he was going to use six different kickers to we had six dressed out did you did, really yeah <laughs> alrighty first and ten for Hiram we get to the ball pretty quick, Coach. Yeah, we just got to uh, we got to be able to break it down out there in space, but uh, we'll keep working on that. They're at their 41-yard line. Hand off to the running back. Yeah, they did a good job with their draw. Um, you know, they show pass and they throw the ball so much. Yes. From that same um, set, that the draw is pretty tough because you got to get into your drops. And they I think it they threw late. it 21 times tonight. Mm -hmm. Uh, that, that back has good bursts of speed. He just uh, jitterbugs too much. He has so, good, good coverage there. Um, well, if they threw it to 18, you know, that's nine, play we've, we've worked really hard on McCauley running the same play last year for a touchdown, and, and so we've had it in um, to practice against it about every week, and ooh. Quinn comes up and makes the tackle. Popped the ball loose, and number 82 for them was able to jump Yeah, another it. ball that could have bounced our way, yes. but it did not. So they're in plus territory down, threatening to score here. We throw it. I'll yeah, Strand's good, good play by uh, Caden there, I think. Yes, and just third and long. read it really well. This is twice if they'd thrown the ball just a little bit better away, uh, we might have intercepted That's it. That's right. This is their Australian rules kicker. Rolls to the right, punts one. And, and that's the thing about those guys that um, – yeah, he said he didn't get his hand high enough. High enough. Yeah. And the the coverage guy knew that he'd called it fair catch because he eased up. Yeah. But for uh, some that, reason. And, and as the referee's defense, he was between Cole's hand and 
I don't know them trying to defend him, but yeah, it made sense when he was telling me. All right, so the next play. we we run a play there and lose the ball on a fumble. So at 4:44, they're going to get it back deep in our territory, and the block shirts are going to have to step up here. So they're going to have first down at our 30. Just not a ball security. You'll work on that, like you said. Yep. They throw it deep into the end zone, and we've got decent coverage there. And I guess he said we pushed off. Yeah, I asked him later. He said they they had their, I guess, kind of the. They showed me how you when you get married, you put your interlocked arms. So. Oh, okay. All righty. <laughs> Whatever he says. Yeah. Anyway, they had first first and ten at the fifteen. Now it's second down. And he's going to try to get around us, and this yeah, is a good nice pursuit out there, and, and stretched it out to where there's nowhere to go. And Quinn made a good tackle. Nice open field tackle. Third down. Third and long. Quarterback dropping back, looking for somebody in the corner. We got a good rush on him, and he throws it out of bounds. And then they call that it didn't. It, well, when it goes to the parking lot, it, <laughs> it's normally going to be a flag, but it just took him a while to get it. I think it bounced over the fence into the parking lot. I saw a lady running after that. And yeah. She gave up pursuing a ball. So it'll it took a while. I got him out of field goal range because they have a guy who was making 52, 55 yards in warm ups. I don't know if y'all saw oh, him. Yeah. But, yeah, I did. Because they lined up, they're ready to kick it, but it was just going to be a little bit too far. Then they change your mind because it was going to be a 56 yarder. Yeah. Yeah, I watch him put two through the uprights. So they bring in the Aussie punter. High snaps. Kicks the ball down here and it's going to go out of bounds at about the 15 yeah, yard line. Yeah, good punt. It's just one of those you couldn't quite catch and you got to get out of the way of it and did a good job of doing it. Those that. guys are hard to field punts against, coach. 308 left. We've got the ball. First and 10 at our 15. Good hard run here. Good yeah, it hard was. Run. That was good. good um, Kept his feet going. It was uh, Gage Leonard. Gage. Good blocking up front. Um, you get had him. two holes there. He could go on right or left. And we said that in the broadcast. Right. Yeah. He had his choice. Nice read here. Yeah, it was. He you know, didn't do that much. but um, No, he doesn't. He's pretty successful. I don't know he does it. Eight yard gain, second and two. Nice screen out here. Yeah, we're on a screen, a second and short. Get the ball in the five's hands. I uh, feel like you can get the first down. You put the ball in five's hands, good things are going to happen. Got Isaac Brooks and Cam Curtis out here blocking Boy, for he, him. Nice blocks, and he split it quick. And it was. It was a good job. Isaac's a very hard worker, and we'll keep trying to find spots to put him. First and 10 at the 29. Got a nice drive going here. Gage one more time. He is hard to bring down. He is. Got the big boy over there on the left-hand side, Mr. Kirby, doing some nice blocking. Yeah, we're very close right there. We're just watching that one in there of uh, hitting a little seam on a little trap play. <clears throat> We've got Corbin Fuller at running back right now. He carried the previous time. A little stiff arm by Quinn Smith. Yeah, it was a good little RPO. He ready to throw it out there and get throw a good catch, get blocked by Peyton. Quinn just said, get out of my way. Yeah, run the same play there, and uh, he gives it. Yep, gave it to him, and he just pile-drived over him. That ends the first quarter, so we're going to continue this play with second down at their 13. Switch ends. Yeah, run a reverse right here. We, we got our formation out there and had to call him back, and they changed the defense, but we decided to go ahead and run it anyway. And we got it down inside the one. It's very close to score in there. First and goal. Underneath center. Got the heavy set in and handed it off to Caden Williams. Yeah, we, we got to get a little better in that set. We're not uh, executing exactly how we want to, but um, from the half of one to one, we were, we were good to get it in. It's a touchdown for the Yellow Jackets. Extra point by Sergio coming up here shortly. Gotcha. Oh, got the righty. Got Carlos. The righty. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Again, good protection right here. Something that uh, we weren't as good at a couple weeks ago. They keep getting better. And yeah, that's by Carlos. Carlos Orozco. I did get the right number for them. I had them wrong I'm on my wrong. score sheet. I yep, yep. I knew there was one. I changed the wrong one. The, I, I didn't know if anybody was going to feel this but us. Very close getting it, yeah. Again, the squib, and it's on the ground. Was that Isaac trying to steal the ball from him? It looked like it. 
First and ten for Hiram. They had trouble getting a play in. The coach on the sideline was wearing a gold T-shirt, and it was hard to see his hand signals. Yeah. Hand off to the running back. He wants to cut it back a little bit. Yeah, there's, there's no no, no, hold, no holes. The uh, defense do a good job of filling their gap and, and giving them nowhere to run. So a little bubble screen out here on the right, left-hand side, and we've got it covered. That's your inside linebacker coming out making that play. Yeah, good read. Christopher. Getting to a little third down package here. and Again, you know, you, that's good pursuit. You miss the tackle first and then get up and come in and you help out on it. Brings up another punting situation. Now you told me before the game you were going to try your best to get one of these blocks. Yeah, I thought we could get an extra point of field goal and just couldn't quite get it. And is it it's one of those... You, you know, you almost darned if you do and darned if you don't. I mean, where do you want your returner to stand? On oh, those like are that? tough. The rubber guys are tough. Yes. First and ten for the Jackets from our 15. Brother to brother, Christian to Christopher. Yeah, that's a good play fake. Good job of uh, getting out there. Yeah, nice 18-yard the gain. First and ten for the Jackets. Amari Winston, the freshman, a little toe tap on the sideline. Yeah, it was good. Um, Good job keeping his feet in. He's probably got big feet. They read that screen pretty well. Yeah, we, a little misread there. We'd rather probably hand it off, but. They got Isaac for a one-yard loss. Yeah. So we run the Wildcat. We don't handle the snap because a little bit of a high snap. And down the sideline he goes. He's going to score. This yeah. is Gage Leonard. Yeah, not great execution, but when you put – Two of your fastest guys back in the backfield. It makes uh, it makes up for. Uh, you, you'll uh, take the sixty-one yard touchdown. That's correct. Yeah. All righty. Extra point coming in. Now we'll go back to Sergio. I told you, coach. I just had the wrong ones marked. We had six, so it was. Uh, you never know when you might need your six kicker. But Coach Hernandez, he just keeps after me. He says, eh, "I'm going to keep." Literally, we started the year with. One? One and a half. Yeah, yeah. And then they I think kept, the half they kept was multiplying. Injured, yeah. yeah. Another squib kick. Yeah. Ooh, there's a slobber knocker. Good job by Dustin and, and Isaac Brooks and uh, C.J. Hawkins. Three really good athletic juniors that getting after it. Yeah. First and ten. Oof! You about got that one. If he's throwing that a little closer to eighteen, we could have picked mm -hmm. it. Incomplete pass, second and ten. Pound on the right side, no place to run. You know, if they get some of the kids that are walking the hallways at Hiram, they might be able to put some yeah, they numbers got, out they there. Yeah, they've got a good track team and a good basketball team. That's what I hear. There's a few of them are out there, but I imagine they have some that are I'll still bet 82's walking. on a basketball team. So a streak down the left sideline. And just out of his hands. Yeah, again, that's just the you throw it up, and hopefully their athlete can make a catch, and he just about did. But it's pretty good coverage. Well, I think him. Quinn, when Quinn hit him, it knocked the ball out of his yeah. hand. Another punt coming up. <laughs> Blazes after the punter. They were going to be able to field one. Across the 30 yard line. Down the sideline he goes, and he is off to the races, folks. Cuts back into the middle. Nobody's going to catch Cold Spear. Touchdown. Yeah, get him out in space, and that's a, uh, has a chance to, to, to make a big play. Good for us, dangerous for the opposition. That's correct. That's our first special teams return for a touchdown this year. That's correct. 71-yarder. Line up for the extra point. And we're going to get Mr. Orozco in to do it. 640 left. You're feeling a little bit better about the game right now, 28 Yeah, to we are. We've done, you know, other than that fumble down there in our side of the field, we've done everything that we wanted to do. Right. Um, special teams playing great, defense playing great, and offense is executing other than that. So it's a great kick right here. He had some really good deep kicks. We had, yes, he did. We skied it, squibbed it, and went deep today. Um, you know, great coverage down there by you know, the same, same guys for the most part. Yes, and Sergio put it in between the numbers on the sideline, and he got distance on it, and this is good. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, he worked really hard. His, his height's been there, but he hadn't been getting it far enough outside. And tonight, he, he did a great job. So first and 10 from their nine-yard line with 631 left, as you can see. <clears throat> Three receivers up top trying to throw a bubble screen out here. And if the ball bounces north instead of That's right. east, we got we got to pick six. Ball just bounced to the side instead of going downfield. Hand off to the running back. Yeah, it was a good draw. It was a good pursuit by uh, Lex Walred. Lex came off that block and stopped him because he, he had a lot of green turf. Mm -hmm. He was rushing and red run and made a good play. Threatening to blitz with Mason. He freezes at the line of scrimmage. Three receivers <coughs> up top to the right-hand side. Hey, we'll snap the ball, I promise you. Yeah. But not before a delay a game, I believe. Yeah, I think they got a delay. Yeah. Play clocks weren't working. Yeah, when did they quit working? Um, right before the game. Ah. It's always great. Roll to the right-hand side, cut back to the left, and we're going to close on him real quick, and he gets down. Smart move. Yeah, it was a good job. Caden contained him there. and. <laughs> Then the Chris, guys Christopher with patting him on the back and saying, good thing, because yeah. we were about ready to take your head off. Another punt coming up. I think they had 10 of them, didn't they, Coach? 10 punts? I'm not sure. Yeah, I think so. Yes, 10 for a 35 average. You normally win all <laughs> 10 punts. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you do. All right, first and 10 for the Jackets. We're in their, plus, in their territory. Big hole here. That's Gage running that ball hard. They were in buck sweep and a couple of people that didn't well, that's one of the things block it correctly. Called timeout. We didn't, didn't have like the look that we were going to run that play into. So. Yeah, that's one of the things they mentioned that uh, a lot of you spread coaches are incorporating some of the wing tee offense mm -hmm. into the spread offense in case you want to run some time off the clock. Yeah. Hand off to Caden. Got a nice hole. Down the field he goes. Inside yeah. the 10. That was a good hole, good run. Big holes, Coach. Hall's Hogs are doing a much better job. First and goal to nine. Offsides against them, so it's going to set up a half the distance of the goal, and we got it at the four and a half. And to the running back, and that is Mr. Williams into the end zone. Yeah, it was a good block, and Coach Hall made an adjustment on the zone right there to a tight end during the last uh, break, and it, it worked out right there. Caden had two rushing touchdowns for the season. He's up to six, as is Gage, with his three for tonight. Mr. Sanchez putting it through, kicking it towards the baseball diamond. And we are up big right now, Coach. Yeah, you know, we're <laughs> you're crazy how much two minutes and 50 seconds will change your outlook going into halftime. But yes. Right, right now we're rolling on just about all the phases. And yeah, things are looking good. So they take over with 2.43 left. Give to the running back. Yeah, good stop. Good, good job. My blood pressure's still level. We're good right now. <laughs> your heart rate's down yeah, around about 80, yeah. 88. <laughs> two receivers left and right. Because if we can keep it 35, you, you're running clock. Yeah. And they throw this, and all right, well, that's fine. We've got a great two-minute offense. Let's go down yeah. there and, and score was the, was the plan to it, get it back to a running clock. Little down and out to, turns into a wheel route. Yeah. Down and out and up. They kick the extra point. This young man's going to put it over the concession stand. So it's 35-7 with, as you can see, 157 left. So they're going to kick off to us. Yeah, again, we want to. You know, you don't get to practice your two-minute offense too much in the, in a real game with a you know a thirty-five to seven lead, but we feel good about it. <clears throat> this kid's got a nice leg. So we line up first and ten at our twenty. And make a good throw to Brendan right here, and just about breaks it. <clears throat> he does a nice little post route left to right, gets down the sideline, knocked out of bounds at around a fifteen, was it? Yeah, I think it was 19. 19, that's right. Yeah, 19. So first and 10 at the 19. Got a nice hole, cut back. Cut back again, and then just flat out lose the ball. Yeah. And then they pick it up for a touchback. So 
it changes pretty quick. It does. You know, it's you still feel good about the game, but the, sure. right now you 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 want to get over as quick as you can in the region games. Yes, and, and you're not concerned with the running clock if it's non-region, but you want to get the win and get it over with. Um, Try to hit the big boy on a skinny post. Yeah, and no, all we needed was a field goal. A field goal puts us up 30 again and possibly runs the clock in the third quarter. Yes, on an away game, this coach might run a third quarter running clock. At home, That's he probably right. plays it straight. So they're still at the 20. Three receivers left. Looking downfield. And just about he ran just, that one down. He just about, yeah, you're right. So they're going to be forced to punt. So we're thinking, yeah, well, we we'll can go down and get some points. we got an offense that can do that fairly quick. And field it, drop it, and field it. <laughs> Made the decision to fair catch kind of late there. Yeah. So we take over with 105 left. Looking downfield. Yeah, we're See, very close right here. Just made a made a little adjustment at halftime to, to get the guy open a little better. But Looking to go downfield again. Yeah, he does a good job. He holds it because that linebacker was in his path and then just can't quite Pull it in. connect. So now we're just going to run the clock out. You know, there's probably, I think there's probably 30 seconds, 35 seconds. Um, make them call timeouts if they want to stop it. Right. Um, but really like to just run it and go punt. <clears throat> and we drop the ball. Yeah, we fumble and give them give them a little life right here before half. Right at the forty at R forty four. So they line up three receivers to the left. How many times did you throw the ball to eighty two? No. A bunch. A little scramble here. Runs into his offensive lineman, gets down. Imari wanted to hit him. Two receivers left and right. Pistol formation. Looking downfield, and they throw it to the big boy. Yeah. He goes up over and that's a just it was great coverage. He under, undercut it, and right, he threw it just over Justin's head and to the six six guy. So they've got it first and goal. Nice coverage here. Yeah, it's good coverage. I throw a slant. <clears throat> yeah, Quinn's all over that. They didn't have enough uh, on the line, I think. Is that what it was? Yeah. So they back it up five yards. Going to redo this. So, and we knew, we knew they were going to go go to him in the corner. They called Cole for pass interference. That, eh, a little pushing and shoving, but I thought it was equal. Yeah. So they're down inside the five. Replay the down. Run a little jet sweep to the right hand side and he hits a little hard. And yeah, gets and we just game. about had him stop. That was a good yeah. cut by that guy and yeah. found the end zone. Yeah, he he ran. Give him credit. He ran the ball hard to the end zone. They're gonna line up for the extra point. And number thirty eight's gonna kick it over the concession stand one more time. And yeah. just like that, it's thirty five fourteen with three yeah. seconds left. Three seconds and you know they kick it off and we go to take a knee and. Um, you know, two minutes and 50 seconds ago was not exactly, we didn't think that was going to be the, the, the ending. Right. You know, we're yeah. looking at possibly scoring two more times and then definitely getting to run a clock. And, and now it's 35-14 and, um, you know, emotions were, were running high, which is, you know, it's, it's, it's good. You want to play a perfect right. game of football and we didn't do that in the first half. So had to come in and, and tell them that, you know, make sure that we were, we know where we want to be, and that's what we're, we're we're trying to get trying to get better. And we didn't some instances right there we didn't get better. Coach made the right hand gesture. We had to get the altitude back up where it needed to be. It, was, it dropped off a little bit, so we had to get it back up. We're going to take a timeout. We're going to come back and let Barry and Clint bring you up to date on some scores. We'll come back with the second half highlights and then talk to you. Uh, don't forget, at the end of the show, we'll have the, mm -hmm. we'll show the queen in the court, and uh, yeah. we'll tell you who the king is. And we'll let you look at the ladies and uh, see who the queen is, as well as watching the band. You're watching the Coach Stevenson Scoreboard Plus Show.
Welcome back to the Coach Stevenson Scoreboard Show. We're glad to have you, and coming up, it will be the breakdown of the second half, but before we do that, Barry, you know, the second half showed um, a lot of substituting and um, a lot of guys uh, getting some playing time, but performed really well. Yeah, I, I thought, uh, you know, when the, the second string came into the ball game, I, I thought that they handled themselves really well, uh, didn't give up any points, and... Uh, were able to get a touchdown on the offensive side as well uh, when Thompson connected with uh, Caleb Ray. So, yeah, I, I thought that they uh, really showed a lot of poise as well. You can tell they're starting to get more comfortable on Friday nights under the big lights. That's right. And, uh, you know, it's good to see. It gives you hope for the future. Yeah, it sure does. I think you saw some of the athletic juniors that Coach Stevenson was talking about uh, there on special teams. Another one was uh, Jordan Schuler. Um, getting it done. Yeah. Um, Excuse me, Jacob Shuler. Yeah. My and, fault. Uh, you know, I was really impressed with Christian Smith. I, I thought that he did a, a nice job playing at linebacker. Yeah. Uh, you know, also came in on, played left guard and, and did a good job there as well. So, uh, you know, there, there's definitely uh, some other guys, you know, I'm probably missing. But um, I think really a good performance tonight by – Know, the, the second unit and I thought the first team you know came out and uh, you know they had to come out and make a statement because uh, they didn't really finish the first half as you heard from coach uh, the way that he'd wanted them to and uh, you know had much better performance yeah absolutely just cleaned it up a little bit there in the second half and and we're able to uh, to get it done and and like you said um, didn't end up um, really what, they give up uh, three points? Yeah, just three points in the second half. And, uh, you know, heck, first play from scrimmage in the third quarter, uh, Lewis hit the deep pass and uh, Peyton Law and was able to really kind of set it off from there. Yeah, that was another uh, just nice ball. Uh, we talked to Lewis after the game, interviewed him, and, um, you know, he's, he's one of those – what you don't see um, is the leadership on the sideline that that uh, Christian um, has, and um, you know it's uh, it's it's solid to see. Um, he picks everybody up, but he also corrects uh, when he needs to, and as uh, a solid senior leadership uh, quarterback. Yeah, and that's what you need if you're going to you know be a championship program, as you hear Coach Stevenson talk a lot about. Um, you know, I think it's very important that you have your, your senior quarterback, you know, be that leader. And, um, you know, Calhoun's got a big game, of course, coming up next week with Blessed Trinity. you got some more big games down the road. Um, and they're going to need that. Yeah, speaking of Blessed Trinity, I want to remind everybody, uh, Monday uh, Calhoun takes on Blessed Trinity in softball. Um, it starts at 530. It's a doubleheader, and this is for, for the region. So uh, get out there and support your Lady Jacket softball team. I uh, know they'd really like it, and you'll, you'll see a very competitive game, I think. Yeah, that's right. You know, it's a, definitely a big game, big doubleheader uh, for Calhoun right here in, in Calhoun. So don't have far to go. So be sure to uh, go out and support your Lady Jackets. That's right. Well, Barry, let's get to some scores here, and before we turn it over to Dave Stokes and Coach Stevenson breaking down the second half. All right, it is your carpool scores of the week, sponsored by Sedavis Bank, the bank of here. Calhoun over Hiram, 63-17. to uh, Their opponent next week, Blessed Trinity, played Thursday night football. They knocked off Woodland, 40-3. to Mount Zion, they knocked off a, a hot our Murchie team, 28-14. to Bowden over Gordon Lee, 38-15. It was Cartersville knocking off Cass, 43-7. Cedartown, 31 to nothing winners over Pickens tonight. Northwest Whitfield, 33-27 winners over Central Carrollton. Chattooga, they knock off Gordon Central, 47-21. Cahalla Creek, 28-22 winners over Murray County. Darlington, 40-33 over Bremen. It was Fannin County knocking off Pepperell, 40-14. This was a big game in uh, 2A. Harrelson County knocking off Elbert County, 26-21. Mm -hmm. So Harrelson really uh, poised to make a run, I believe. Heritage. 58-27 winners over Ridgeland. It was model over Coosa, 
Ringgold knocks off Adairsville 24-13. It was Rockmart over North Murray 34-13. Rome 49-6 over Dalton tonight. Sonorville gets a homecoming win over LFO 47-12. Tryon shuts out Southeast Whitfield 49 to nothing. Christian Heritage also with a shutout 41 to nothing over Lakeway Christian. It was Warner Robbins 77 34. Stop the presses. Woo. Ouch. <laughs> over Camden County. That's uh that's impressive. Trinity Christian is speaking of impressive 34 to three over Elka. Uh, Elka is you know, some solid defense. Yeah, Elka is a solid program. You know, beat them 34-3. They mm -hmm. gave Preston Trinity a good game. So. They sure did. Uh, Carrollton knock, knocking off South Paulding 40-13, to so they're back on track, looks like. Raven County and uh, the fighting Coach Davises, 28-21 to over Pierce County. <laughs> it was the little Oscar Meyer truck. Hey, winners, winners. not winners. Wieners tonight. <laughs> 41 to 7, Thomasville over Early County. And everyone's other favorite team outside of Calhoun, the Little Red Devils. Lose again. Hawkins, man, come on. Hawkinsville loses to Dublin 56 14. Man, it's like every week. Every week. Yeah, it's I mean, you have one job, man, just one. At least his message must be consistent. Consistently bad. It is consistently bad. All there right. is no doubt it's consistently bad. That's right. Gonna have to so, change the message or change teams, one or the other. I know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it clearly stinks. <laughs> I mean, I, I'd like to hear it just one good time. Well, that's your scores of the week, folks. Uh, we're gonna take a commercial break. We'll be right back with Dave Stokes and Coach Stevenson breaking down the second half, and um, they'll give you a little extra bonus feature uh, with the homecoming and uh, uh, Hiram's band. We'll be right back. Hey, hey, Yellow Jacket fans, welcome back to the second half, and uh, coaches coached me up, my attitude's high, I'm ready to play. Yeah, that's what I, it was, um, you can call it that, getting altitude <laughs> high, I don't know, I, I hurt my hand hitting a couple things on the way in, uh, no, no, no players were involved, but, right, um, exactly. but it, was a, uh, it was a good time to, to make sure that they realized that we're not playing to you know, to win games like this, we're playing to, to win championships, and that was not a championship caliber performance in the first half. But, um, you know, a little bit that expected um, to, to a degree, but it's still not, not what you want to put out in the wrong field. Well, we were watching before the game started, and you had four football players in the king court. Yeah. And um, I told Barry, Barry and I were talking, we said, this is exactly what high school football coaches don't like about homecoming because the whole pregame preparation has been interrupted. Yeah, everything gets changed, but it's something you do deal with every year. You know, you have to come back in the field house, even right. if it's just five minutes early, it's five minutes more of, of sitting around and with nothing to do. But so. we are creatures of habit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it, it, you know, it's a lot of places don't get to have a, a homecoming like we do in our oh, yes. week and all that kind of stuff. And hey, so what a beautiful night. It was, and it's, it's one of those things that, um, you know, as coaches, you got to be a team player and, oh, and, yes. and give in a little bit to some of that stuff. And that's because uh, the, the people that put that on, you know, Miss Arnold, Coach Arnold's wife, works extremely hard to get that stuff done. So um, I hope that everything went well. We obviously don't get it to did. see it, but it but did. 
it was just a beautiful night. So, yeah. I mean, everything went great. So, hey, we're ready for the kickoff for the second half. And we'll Yeah, get, we're getting the ball, and yeah. I want to get off to a good start. And you, you will. Yeah, kicker's booming it again. So we set up at the 20, first and 10. A little play fake, looking for a receiver down. This is a nice scramble, folks. It was. It's, you know, one of those about every um, – once, twice every practice, you, you do the scramble drill during a play, and um, that was actually Peyton's route that he ran a corner, and then he just kept going to the sideline. And, well, and then it, then it came Maker. back. Mm -hmm. And it was just good read. And Peyton really helped out his quarterback, and then he takes it to the house. Yeah, you teach him if you're deep, come short, and if you're short, go deep for, okay. the, for the scramble drill. And uh, Peyton did that, and Christian saw him. And it was good protection. You see them, they're, they're diving to the ground, so it's hard to, uh, yeah. it's hard to rush the uh, passer from, the, from your belly. Fourth touchdown reception for Peyton, and 15th touchdown pass for Christian. So we get good coverage down there, a nice kickoff. and yeah, it was this, a great kick. Hey, this is good coverage. Yeah, it is the best coverage we've had all, all year for sure. And, and the balls were in the right spots. We're, sh we're showing blitz back off. <clears throat> Quarterback rolls to the right-hand side. And he gets out of bounds because Mr. Spears about ready to lay a lick on him. Not a bad, not a bad plan. Yes, good plan. I like how we're getting to the ball. Nice yeah, again, a draw, you get out there in space, but you got everybody else coming um, coming to the rescue. Yeah, we got Gage and uh, Christopher mopping up with, with Mason, slowed the guy down. They throw a streak down the sideline, and here's an interception. Quinn Smith on a pick. It was a great route. Momo finally got into the action there. <laughs> yeah, get the uh, turnover belt going with Momo. He'd been itching to do it, so great hole there and you know one woman of safety is about as good as you can do from an offensive line standpoint yes we had everybody covered up and all we got to do is beat the safety but we had two hands on the ball which was nice was a good route here by cam curtis and a good throw good catch good protection he did a good job of coming back to the ball yeah and keeping control of the ball before he went out of bounds first and ten for the jackets inside their 35 hand it off to caden he breaks it to the outside Shoestring tackles, keeps him from getting to the end zone. They call it a legal procedure against us. We didn't have enough men on the line of scrimmage, and it was not the... We uh, really didn't agree I'll with that. i check it again. Yeah, I just watched it earlier before we got started with this. Down to the end zone and just... Yeah, we want to take advantage of that matchup. Was just, it was just too far of a throw. Wish we could have gotten into other hash before we, we tried to throw that one, but... <clears throat> We'll sweep to the left with Quinn. A little stiff arm. He picks up a good five yards, gets us back to the oh. where it's ten yards ago and knocked Took out, out the Justin chain guy. Hawkins over there, I think. Had to call Is that who it was? Him. Yeah. Dropping straight back, looking for a receiver. Roll to the right hand side. Throw it out here. I'll tell you what, Clint was down on the sideline. He says, I don't know how he caught that ball. Yeah, it was he was falling down, he caught it. Um brings up a fourth down and we took a timeout. Yeah, a tough spot. You can't kick a field goal from that far, and try to just line up in a uh, in our two by two set, and just uh, couldn't quite connect right there. So they take over on downs. Quarterback drops back, looking over the middle to the number eighteen, who ends up playing quarterback here at the end of the game. He's a nice looking athlete. He's a too. very good looking athlete. They've got several that look look very good and played played really well. But when you match up athlete for athlete like that, you're, um, you're like, I like the, the, the white helmets. Uh, we chances. like our chances. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so good job by Cole Spear. Running back. And this kid's got a burst of speed. Yeah, they're, they're, they've got a hat on a hat for everybody right there. They're doing a good job of, um, they're a very well coached football team, I feel like. So they've got it inside the 10 where it's going to be first and goal. And the black shirts are going to stiffen here. Send a big boy in motion. Number two hides behind him and tries to sneak in there. We've got a good pursuit. Yeah, games like this are, you know, when it's – you feel pretty good about the win. It's good to have these situations uh, to, to practice your goal line stuff and practice on and both sides of the football. That's Christopher Lewis coming into the backfield from his linebacker position, making a nice play, backing him up a little bit more. Throw it over in the corner. 
This is nice defense by Col by Quinn. Yeah. He was all over him. He knew what they were going to run. They line up for the field goal. Yeah, it was a good stop there on <clears throat> third down. Yeah, you'll take that, won't you? Yeah. I mean, when they're down there first and goal, absolutely. You, you hold them to a field goal, so that that's good. This was one missed kick of the night, and uh, Coach Perkins worked really hard on getting the uh, house team to change their change the count a little bit, and, and worked out well there. It was a big hole, and uh, <laughs> yeah, Mr. Spear did the rest. Coach, er Coach, there was a big hole there. there was a very good hole. But, <laughs> yeah, but it's and so tough with a kickoff returner because. You may see a big hole from the end zone or sideline, but if you miss it initially, you, you miss it. So yeah. it's not like you can sit there and dance. So he trusted it was going to be there and hit it, and uh, it opened up for him. 87-yard kickoff return. So we've got touchdowns on punt returns and kickoff returns. Sergio kicks it out to the shortstop, and the Jackets expand their lead to 49 to 17. Speaking of shortstop, it was good having Coach Henderson um, there and yes. you know, doing all that pregame. We didn't get to see it, but um, we heard it went everything It went, went well. really well. Yeah, it had a lot of a lot of players and That's parents good. out there honoring him, so Very it was good. nice. They gave him a big plaque. Awesome. And, and Clint and I were able to interview him uh, before the game started. Oh, good. I had to hustle get the starting lineups in, but it was fun talking to Coach yeah. Chip. There they throw a little uh, fox route with a fake screen. And, and but we had that pretty well covered, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Yeah. Oh, Mason Green with a slobber knocker in the hole. Yeah, he, he got it, and then I think uh, Gregory came from – he got it from both sides right yes, there. Yes, he did. He'll feel that one. Christian think, Gregory. And Kelly Wells in there. And receiver just dropped the ball. Yeah. So that brings up a punting situation for the – Hornets one more time. And it's just one of these situations. They're coming off different angles and different heights and different distances. It's uh, it's tough. We've experimented with, but Christopher punts it so well. You don't want to mess with his. Uh, and he can do that. We just we don't. A good block there by Jace. It looked like. Yep. Gage Leonard takes off down the field, and we're up, we're up near midfield again. Try to hit cold deep there and had to hitch up just a hair, but it was still a great throw, great catch. He, he breaks a tackle. About, yeah, broke two and just about got there. The kid almost missed him by trying to tackle him high. Yeah. I don't know what Cole was saying to him, but first and goal for the Jackets. Trying to get him Amari in there and we're just close. I think with a little more space, Mike could have gotten it. Yeah, we need a little bit more field. Down, have, down have to the three. To get plenty of them in his career. Oh, yeah, he will. And Gage takes it in for another touchdown. Got a little chippy right here. It did, you know, but, you know, luckily the officials just kind of let it, everybody push us up and say what they would do. But, um, you know, we're taking up for our, our running back right there. They kind of hit it late. But Carlos Orozco with the extra point, and we're up to 56 to 17 with 3.38 left. Yeah, we're. Um, You're back rolling again. Back rolling again, just trying to get. Now we're trying to get to the fourth quarter and make sure we still have a. A uh, running clock. <laughs> yeah, the first half still lingering in your mind. Good huh? tackle there by Corbin, and I bet you'd say a host of Yellow Jackets on the air. Maybe. There you go. We did. Two receivers each side. Run a little bubble screen out here, and we've got it covered up. You got some yeah, young got guys Christian in here Smith right now. Smith and um, Caleb Bray in there on the on the stop. Yeah, you started substituting. Yeah, after that last score, we tried to get all of the. Especially the two-way players out. We still had a couple of starters in, but you know, I thought when he was scrambling, we were going to swipe the ball and knock it loose. Yeah, they had, had several. They were we were close. He was, that ball was hanging down there loose. So they throw a little flare out here to the right-hand side, and we've got it covered up pretty well. Yeah, again, I think that was Christian Smith, Nathan Fuller over there as well. Yeah, you got a lot of young guys who are doing a good job. Another high snap. We got Jacob Schuler back there catching the punt. And he, if, if, there's, if he can catch it, he's going to run and try to get it. Um, well, he gets you first down. Yeah, but the best part of that was was this right here. You know, he's no, he's not scoring. Two hands on the ball. There and, you go. You know, we we preach all the time. Two hands in traffic and don't take a hit with the football, and and he does it exactly. Yeah. Plus a ten yard return. Yeah. 
So first and ten for the Jackets. They're at their own 38-yard line. You got Trey in there. Um, a little screen set up, didn't quite uh, execute it like I wanted to. <clears throat> Back to the 37. Yeah, we got um, Corbin Fuller running the ball. I think Terry Moss is at guard. Lance Maldon's at center. Lance did a good job. Christopher Ellis for, for Ty Massey, didn't he? Yeah, he played really well. Yeah. Trey Townsend in a court, and this is a nice throw, folks. It's a very good throw. We got off with our – we thought it was going to be in the middle from the last play, and they put it on the hash, so uh, we just stuck with the play anyway. Oh, he threw a good ball. Mm -hmm. Got Corbin Fuller in at running back. Yeah, Ben Williams in at tight end, Caleb Ray at H. I think Isaac Brooks still at Z. They read that one fairly well. Yeah, we're, we're trying to just – we're trying to run the clock out. That's yes. What we're trying to do, and we're running into some looks you don't really want to run into. But oh, this is a nice play. Yeah, it was good blocking out there. I can't think CJ was there, and I'm not sure the other one was, but it was good. I think that was third down. Dustin Kearns, it was on the receiving end. Corbin's got a nice hole, left side blocking well. Yeah, it was a good block by the line. So we're down to the 17 yard line. One more. They make a good read this time. They came in, crashed hard from the backside. Yeah, we're letting it. The play clock wasn't working, so we're letting the guy get to. When he raises his hand, it's this is third ten. Uh, good, good play fake by Trey and uh, good route by Caleb Bray. For a Caleb touchdown. Bray gets his first receiving touchdown of the year, and it's Trey's second touchdown pass of the year. Yeah, it was a good job, good execution. We ran the same play they ran. Out the fox, yeah. you fake a screen and throw it. Carlos Lopez in there kicking that extra point. Might have been his only one. I think I'm it was. Sure. His I really don't know who's in there most of the time. It was his only one. I see him kicking off as well. And it, well anytime the ball's ball is on the ground, you got a chance. Yes. That's better than a touchback. Yeah, our JV kickoff team in right there and pin them inside the 20s. So I think they'll get a star. On Monday. But well, Young has got a touchdown for you. High snap. This kid does a good job of getting rid of the ball. I thought we were going to get a touchdown yeah, he does. safety. He yeah. He throws the ball down the field and nobody catches it. It is right over number 88, so it was a good play by that quarterback. Yeah, he plays wide receiver for the team normally. But they've got him listed on the program as sophomore quarterback. Hmm. He's just probably a good athlete. They want to get on the field. Yes. One way or another. Drops back, looking downfield, going to scramble to the left, and we're going to run him down. That's Kelly Wells, just coming off of, uh, he's been a nagging injury a little bit. Got John Ross in the game. Kelly gets a sack. He does. Forces in a punt. They punt this ball with, going to end up being a 51-yard punt. Yeah, they got it. It's good hang time and got good roll. They got good rolls all night. So we're going to take over at our 38-yard line. Yeah, I told the referees, I said, let's, let's take as long as we can to get it blown in and get it set because we're trying to – I think it was about four minutes still. Yeah. And we're, you know, really not doing what, what we can to, to try to put another one on the board. Yeah, I would figure – clock and yeah. – Hand off to Corbin. He does yeah, a good job of running. he does a great job of running and protecting football. He likes to run downhill, Coach. Got Isaac Green in there. Shooter's down here at X. One more time to Corbin. That gets you the first down. That pretty much ices the game. Yeah, and that was it. It was, yep. a, um, it was good. You you look at 63-17 and you think, oh, that was a, it was a great game. And it was. You know, we played – Played well, but you got things that you want to fix and go back and get better at. So we'll have next week to do it, and um, and hopefully we'll show up Monday ready, ready to go. And because we had a big week next week, uh, yes, we do on the road. So it'll be a it'll be a fun week uh, of preparation, and hopefully we can show up and, and, and play next week. We're going to visit Blessed Trinity next week. That's correct. Yeah, and that'll be a big game. It will. It will. I think it's. Um, 
I think it's going to be an 8 o'clock start. If I'm not oh, mistaken, really? Because it's on uh, Peachtree TV. Oh, okay. So the TV, I think there's a uh, Malcolm in the Middle or something comes on at 7.30 and we'll be after that. Uh, <laughs> so, it, but it'll be, last Friday I got to watch the, the game that was on there and it came on at 8. So, pretty sure it'll be at 8. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll push it out as soon as we get it. But I'm uh, looking forward to, like I said, having a good week of practice and, and going down there and um, seeing what we can do. So we had Megan Ryan sing the national anthem, Georgia's outstanding team. Right. And, and she did a really yeah, good Megan job. Ryan. And our system teacher of the year was Mrs. Ruff, the elementary teacher. Awesome. Yeah. And so this is all new to me. I'm not okay. sure. Okay. So. And then if we honored. Looking for confirmation, I'm not sure. Okay. I'll go with it. Okay. We'll go with it. And then we honored Coach Chip Henderson because they dedicated the naming of the baseball stadium, yeah. baseball field in his honor. So that was a real nice ceremony. They had a lot of things going on. In fact, you had a delay in the game so they could. Um, we did. I might have to, uh, have to talk with them. Uh, because there just wasn't enough time in pregame to get everything done. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to sit Casey down and show her exactly what the defense changed after we had to wait and, and, and show her. But no, it's, uh, it was it's good. We, we, we couldn't fit anything in. You know, we get a script and we get it to Eddie Reeves on Monday or Tuesday. And there was a lot of stuff that oh, was going on. So tons. we couldn't get that fit in. So it was, uh, it was good to get out there. And who won that, you know? The, no, it the, the, soft, June, the sophomores won. Sophomore I saw class. Matt Scoggins yeah. carrying the trophy. Yeah, he sophomore class won it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, and all I, the floats were great. I had float duty Wednesday night, and they were, I thought this was one of the best years. That it was, really? They were all very good. So. Yeah, I, I missed the parade. So um, I, I missed not having the floats in the, inside the stadium because they used to bring them in there years oh, yeah. ago. But we, we had mm -hmm. extra bleachers because we have – Thankfully, so many fans that want right. to come to the game, so that's a good thing. So, we, uh, you're going to get to look at the, uh, we won't see the band marching this week. So, they performed background music to, during the selection of the Queen. So, the freshman attendant was Bella Peak. The sophomore attend attendant was Tammy Vasquez. The junior attendant was Anna Catherine Hayes. And the court was made up of, Mac for Queen, Maggie Kemp, Emma Williams, Carla Mendoza, Lily West, and Kennedy Morgan. Of course, we had the last year's queen, Ashlyn Brzozowski, crown the new queen. And the new queen was, you probably don't even know yet, do you? I do not. Carla Mendoza. Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Carla Mendoza. Good deal. And uh, we also, before the game started, they introduced the king court, and that was Christopher Lewis, Pramit Patel, Pramit, yeah, Pramit Patel, uh, Clinton, or no, Christian Lewis, Cole Spear and Mason Green. You know it's bad when I can't even read my own writing. Yeah. So the queen or the king that was crowned was Pramit Patel. Awesome. awesome. So they'll have a big dance tomorrow and life is good. That's right. But, you know, the thing I challenged them after um, after the game, I said this game's over, let's make sure we um, we treat this weekend like champions as well. And yes. we've worked we've yes. worked hard to uh, to put ourselves in a, in a bad situation. So I, I'm hoping they, they take heed and um, put the football team first, and, and which I know they will. It's just a, we have to, it's a constant reminder that all football coaches have to let's get their homecoming week and, and get on to a uh, to another game week. As your children get older, you will realize it's a constant reminder. Yeah. So it, it's it's a constant reminder for, for the parents are doing the same thing. So uh, that'll all work out well. Uh, pipeline. Yes. Um, Yesterday, middle school or ninth grade was supposed to play Marist. Didn't get to um, JV middle school beat Adairsville yesterday, forty nine to nothing. JV played Woodland on Wednesday. Sorry, I'm uh, having uh, can't remember, but it's early next morning. Yeah, when they played Woodland on Wednesday and they got, they got the win, so all three of those teams are, are still undefeated. Um, have a couple of games next week, so. Um, looking to keep keep that rolling and, and keep the keep the unbeaten streak for the for the pipeline going. Yeah, and uh, pipeline will go well. So congratulations again on a 63 to 17 victory. Uh, now it's time to get ready for Blessed Trinity, and that will be at Blessed Trinity. And folks, as uh, as Coach Clay said, it's probably going to be an eight o'clock start. Any final comments before we wrap this up? No, thank Brody again for over there um, the professional button pressure and pusher and. We'll have the homecoming coming up. It may take uh, a couple of commercial rolls to get it over there, but it'll be coming up here shortly. You can just fast forward to get to the uh, get to a lot better looking than what they've been <laughs> what they've been looking at. What they've and been looking at, right. right? But 
uh, overall, good night. Um, you know, thankful that blessed that being at Calhoun is, is, is special, and, yes. and, and getting to have a homecoming night um, and getting to win is even even better. So. And when Mother Nature cooperates, it's, it's great it, it, for the it, girls. It was a great night of uh, Calhoun football and the Calhoun community getting to come out and see homecoming. Yeah, it, it was it was a really special night. A lot of things going on. A lot of people being honored. So it was just a a great evening, folks. We really appreciate you watching. Don't forget to tune in. As Coach Clay just said, it'll be a little bit time. Give us some time to get it on YouTube, but you'll be able to see it 24-7 anytime you want. We will be at Blessed Trinity. Game will start at 8 o'clock. We'll get on the air about uh, 6.45 with the in the locker room prediction show, and then uh, we'll have pregame a half hour before the game starts at 7.30. Uh, come on down to Blessed Trinity. Let's root the jackets on and take care of the Titans. Remember, we want to forget the Titans. We're not into any remembering it anymore. We want to beat these Titans. Anything else? Nope. Thank that, you again for time. thank you again for watching. You have been watching the Coach Clay Stevenson Scoreboard Show.
sister Ashley and two brothers, Adrian and Giovanni. She's involved with HOSA FCTLA, and she's also a member of the Lady Jacket soccer team. This is Tammy's second year as class representative. She enjoys hiking with her family, sonic runs with her friends after football games, and going shopping with her mom. Tammy is honored to be given the opportunity to represent the class in 2024. Tonight, Tammy's being escorted by her stepfather, Tony Gonzalez. Joining him on the field is her mother, Karina. This will be her third year as a nominee. She's involved in Calhoun Theater and is a proud member of Thespian Troop 2940. Anna Catherine is also a part of the CHS Women's Trio and the Beta Club. Anna Catherine attends Rock Bridge Community Church. In her spare time, she enjoys painting, Bible journaling, and spending time with her drama family. Anna Catherine would like to thank her wonderful classmates for selecting her as a nominee for the class of 2023. Anna Catherine is being escorted tonight by her father, Chris Hayes. Joining her on the field is her mother, Jenny. <laughs> Miss Anna Catherine Hayes. And now, we are 2021 Homecoming Queen Court. The first member of the Homecoming Queen Court is Miss Maggie Kent. Carson Kent, a 2018 CHS graduate. Maggie is a CHS majorette and has been honored to twirl with the best band in the land for four years. Her favorite teachers throughout high school have been Ms. Raspberry, Ms. Chadwick, and Ms. Huey. Maggie is a member of Skills USA for both graphic design and law and justice. She's a member of the Spanish Honor Society, Book Club, Interact Club, and Yearbook. Maggie works as a sales associate for a fine metal fit and enjoys working with Calhoun Complex of Speech and Therapists during her work-based learning. Maggie plans on earning her degree in speech and language pathology and pursuing a career in speech. Maggie attends church with her family and treasures her daily devotionals. Her favorite time is spent riding around with her best friends, being outdoors, and jamming to Dolly Parton in Old East Country. She loves eating supper at her grandma and pops and traveling with her nana and family. Maggie says she loves the class of 2022 so much that she's extremely thankful to give, have this opportunity. Tonight, Maggie is being escorted by her father, Brian Kemp. Joining them on the field is her mother, Brandy. <laughs> Miss Maggie Kemp. The second member of the Homecoming Queen Court is Miss Emma Williams. Emma is the daughter of Scott and Jamie Williams. She has one brother, Dawson, who is a CHS grad and a sophomore at the University of Georgia. Emma and her family attend Sugar Valley Baptist Church. She's an FCA huddle leader and a member of the CHS tennis team. Emma is the president of the National Honor Society, secretary of the student body, and host of treasurer. She's also a member of the Beta Club, Key Club, Spanish Honor Society, Skills USA, and the Cal Student Athlete Leadership Team. Her love for people and desire to help others has led her to pursue a degree in nursing and hopes of one day becoming a nurse practitioner. In her free time, Emma enjoys spending time with her family, hanging out and making lifelong memories with her best friends, and being the front of all the ginger jokes. She shared that she is thankful for the love, support, and words of encouragement that she has received from her family, friends, and teachers. Emma is honored to have been selected by her classmates and the homecoming nominee all four years of high school. Tonight, Emma is being escorted by her mother, Jamie, and joining them on the field is her father, Scott. <laughs> Miss Emma Williams. The third member of the homecoming court is Miss Carla Mendoza. Carla is the daughter of Hugo and Gabby Mendoza. She has two older sisters, Hilda and Lupita. She serves as an FCA leader and National Honor Society officer. She's a member of the swim team, jazz band, beta club, Spanish Honor Society, and HOSA. Carl attends the Church of God of Prophecy, where she is a worship leader. She would like to share a Bible verse that says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added to you. In her spare time, she loves to eat, make memories with friends and family, play the piano, and catch her moments on the camera. Since she cannot pick a favorite, Carl would like to thank all teachers for the love and knowledge they pour into young people. In the future, she hopes to attend every university and major in biology. She is very humbled by this opportunity. We'd like to thank God and the phenomenal class of 2022 for selecting her as a homecoming queen nominee. Well, I'd like to thank 
give a special thank you to CHS administrators and her loving family. Carla is being escorted tonight by the father Hugo. With him on the field is her mother, Gabby. <laughs> Miss Carla Mendoza. The fourth member of the homecoming court is Miss Lily West. Lily is the daughter of Shelby and Shelly West. She has one sister, Lila, who is a freshman at Cal High School. This is Lily's third year as homecoming nominee. Lily is a varsity football competition and game day cheerleader, and she loves cheering on the Yellow Jackets on Friday nights. Lily is also a member of the National Honor Society, Spanish Honor Society, Beta Club, HOSA, Skills USA, and the Calhoun Student Athlete Leadership Team. Lily plans to attend Kennesaw State University in the fall of 2022 and major in nursing. In her spare time, she can be found at work at cheer practice, struggling to finish her AP stats homework for Miss Holland. She loves going to Target runs, binge watching the Twilight movies, and spending time with her friends and family. Lily would like to thank her classmates, the administration, and especially Miss Arnold for allowing us to experience this amazing opportunity. Lily is so grateful to the class for 2022, and she's honored to represent Cal High School. Tonight, Lily is being escorted by our father, Shelby. Joining him on the is her mother, Shelly. Miss <laughs> Lily West. The fifth member of the homecoming court is Miss Kennedy Morgan. <laughs> Kennedy is the daughter of Judy Morgan. She has four siblings, Carolina, Stowe, Creighton, and Carmen. This is her fourth year in the homecoming court and would like to say thank you to her peers. Kennedy is involved in Cal's varsity football team as captain, the varsity soccer team, FCA Prayer Team, NAHS, Beta, NHS, and Spanish Honor Society. She attends Rock Ridge Community Church. Some of Kennedy's favorite memories over the years will be seeing karaoke in yearbook class, seeing how long she can last without passing out of soccer workouts, playing high and seek in school during the volleyball banquet, attending Mr. Elachman's pottery class, screaming in the student section, Dr. Johnson's AP US history class, and singing happy birthday in Coach Robinson's class. She currently works as a team leader at Chick-fil-A. Kenny loves to play great records, shop at Goodwill, and go to the beach with her family. After high school, she plans to attend a four-year college and become a school counselor. If she could give her classmates one piece of advice, it would be not to worry about the approval of man, but work for the approval of the Lord. Tonight, Kenny is being escorted by her grandfather, Gerald Barker. Joining him with is her mother, Julie. <laughs> Miss Kennedy Morgan. Welcome back our 2020 homecoming queen, Miss Ashton Bozowski. <laughs> Ashton is currently attending Georgia Southern University where she is majoring in psychology. She's being escorted out by Miss Casey Parker, the principal of Cowan High School. If you would now turn your attention to the Jumbo Tribe for a brief message from Ashton. Hey Jacket Nation, I'm very excited to be back in my hometown. I was so honored to have been chosen to be the 2020 Calhoun High School Homecoming Queen. I know you're feeling very nervous and excited tonight, but whoever is chosen will be a wonderful representative of Calhoun High School. Taking this moment, you'll remember it for a lifetime. You all look beautiful and are so deserving. And as always, Go Jackets! Ladies and gentlemen, We'd like to take a moment to thank everyone for being in attendance for our 2021 Calhoun High School homecoming. At this time, we would like to announce Calhoun High School's 2021 homecoming queen. Calhoun High School's 2021 homecoming queen is Ms. Carla Mendoza. Please stand and join us singing at Calhoun High School's alma mater. 